بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. إن شاء الله I'm going to review quickly because of the midterm supposing I don't like to give tests, believe it or not. I don't like to be tested and I don't like to give tests. But this is the way to do it, then why not, إن شاء الله. We re uh, remember last time we talked about engagement and uh, we said we talked about some of the, some of the rules of engagement, like seeing uh, the person that you're engaged to to a level that it will get you accepted, and uh, some of uh, some of the uh, the rules that we have given. So this may be one of the test questions. Here you go, giving you a hint already. Okay. So today we'll start, inshallah, and hopefully everything you hear today should be so in the test inshallah and you can read it in any fiqh book um, no specific book I'm just preparing from different books and bringing it together to make it easy for you and just conclude what the scholar says sometimes you could find 20 different opinions so you're going to read about 200 pages and at the end you're like okay what, what is these guys saying just give me what, what they said that's it that's what happened in fiqh a lot of books are written this way the scholars might tell you and this is the opinion of Shafi'i and the opinion of Malik and Abu Hanifa and Ahmad and so and so agreed with him and somebody and you don't even know these names. You're like, at the end, is it haram or halal? <laughs> okay, right? So this is what we're trying to get to the fiqh, to what we call simple fiqh, okay? Not that we're gonna say it's wrong or it's allowed. If something needs an evidence or a proof, then we will mention it. If something there is agreed upon and majority, then we'll go with it inshallah. Yeah. So today we'll start uh, by talking about the uh, first we'll talk about the different kind of marriage there are haram the for, which they are called the forbidden marriage okay the forbidden marriage the first marriage is called nikah al-shigar nikah al-shigar and nikah means marriage what, what does it mean um, that you agree with somebody to marry his sister in exchange of marrying your sister. So you say to somebody, I want to marry your sister. He says, okay. How much you want to give her? You say, I'm not going to give you anything. But I'm going to give you my sister. So you, it, it's a, a way of exchange. Why? No, no, uh, okay, the word, the word in Arabic, I really couldn't find the translation. Maybe there is, uh, الشغار, which is an exchange. There you go. MashaAllah, I found the trend. Exchange marriage, okay? Ashigar, exchange marriage. So, that you agree upon that. You say, um, the, the ulama says it's um, invalid or it's, it's batil, okay? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has hadith narrated by Jabir, he says, do not do such a marriage or do not allow it. He naha, he forbids sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, if somebody says, you marry my daughter for $10,000 dowry, you say, no, you marry my daughter and I marry your daughter. How about that? So they do like a form of an exchange. This is haram. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, this marriage is, is haram. Second marriage, which is called nikahu uh, al-muhallil. Okay, and I'm gonna try to... Al Muhallil means somebody who allowed something. They call him Muhallil, allowed. Or somebody who makes something that is haram, halal. What is this marriage? The second marriage, which is the, the allowed. What do they mean by that? Somebody who divorced his wife three times. Okay? What's the rule? And let's get active, inshallah. What's the rule? You can't marry unless she married. Somebody else. So he goes and say, okay, a brother so-and-so, come and marry my, my wife. Okay, why? To make her allowed for me again. So he married her for one night. Okay, night stand thing. They get married, official contract, everything. And he says, you marry her today, you divorce her tomorrow. So now, when she got divorced, now he could do what? He could marry her. This marriage is haram. The marriage between... The muhallil is the, what they call a muhallil, he's in between, he's making something haram, halal. So that person in between, that they pay him money, subhanAllah, and many times, I know a lady, she told me her story, she was from Palestine. She's about maybe 95 years old. 
she said she was married to an old man who was very angry all the time. So he divorced her, okay, three times. And he brought a young guy that he know, he worked with him, and he told him, you marry my wife and divorce her tomorrow, okay? The guy got married, at night they talked, they liked each other somehow. Came second day, he said, okay, what happened? Divorce? He said, divorce who? He said, divorce my wife. She's not your wife, she's my wife. And the guy was like, what do you mean? She said, we, we made a deal. He said, forget the deal. Deal is over. She's my wife. And they lived together for 50 years, mashallah. She said, I never went back. I never wanted to go back anyway. But that, that marriage should be, they should redo it because it was done haram. So that person in between that makes, they use him. They call him the muhallil. They use him, the, the one that makes the, the loudness. The Rasulullah cursed him and curse the person who brings him, okay? But what if, if somebody divorced his wife three times and then she liked somebody else, they got married for even one day and he died. Can she return to her first husband? Yes, now it's Allah because no deal is done. The only time that is haram is when, when there is a deal, you agree with somebody. And a lot of people, believe it or not, they still do that. And subhanAllah, if somebody divorced his wife three times, how do you know that he's not going to do it again three times? And then bring a muhallid. This is like playing with the deen. And the woman becomes like a, a, a product right now that you, you sell and buy. It becomes very easy. I divorce her, easy. I'm going to bring somebody. Just one night, okay? And then pay him some money and then make it halal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La'an Allahu al-muhallila wal muhallalala. May Allah curse the one who does that, meaning the person that they, they pay to do it, and the person who brings him to do it. Okay? So their marriage is what? Invalid. Invalid. No. Third, uh, no. Yes. Yes. Now it becomes halal for him to re remarry his wife after she passed her uh, either f uh, uh, four months after uh, death or three of her uh, menses or three of your purification or four, they consider that. So after she passes a certain time, either three or four, three months or so, and then she could remarry him, no problem. But with a new contract, a new dowry, like we're gonna talk about today, okay, it becomes like a new marriage. And now he has three. That's why the ulama or ulama, rahmanullah, sometimes they even warn people, especially with men, okay? Because sisters, they don't swear by divorce. Do you guys, do you? No, nobody, no girl, no woman swears by divorce unless she, she controls the contract in her hand. That's something different. But men, they swear by divorce all the time, okay? And this is like an easy matter. Some of our fuqaha, especially in our countries, okay? Maybe in, in, in America it's not very common. In our country, anybody who wants to swear, they swear by divorce. They tell you, hey, come and drink some tea with me. You're like, no. And then he starts swearing by divorce. Like, why do you divorce your wife for tea? It's not an easy matter. Allah called it the great covenant. Allah called it al-mithaq al-ghalil. He didn't call anything great covenant. Like you have a deal with somebody, it's a contract between you and your wife. He called it the great covenant. This is a promise that Allah respects and his Prophet Sallallahu that you can't just play around with it. You can't say, I'm gonna marry somebody and let's see how it works. We already said before, marriage should be with an intention of what? That it's what? Permanent. Permanent, okay? So this is the second marriage that is haram. Third marriage, according to us, Ahl Sunnah, not according to anybody else, okay? Nikah al muta temporary marriage, okay? Temporary marriage. And uh, you know who, who says, okay. What is a temporary marriage? Temporary marriage, that is the man and the woman, they agree to marry it for a few days or few months or few weeks, okay? This is called temporary marriage. At the beginning of Islam, it was made halal for a period of time. It was allowed. And the reason for it, for it, it was allowed that when Muslims migrated and they left their wives in, in Mecca, and a lot of Muslims, they went to battles with Rasulullah they died. So they left behind so many widows in Medina. So this marriage was, was, was a kind of a, um, what do we call, escape out of the problem, okay? For a period of time, till things settle, and then Rasulullah said, in the ninth year, he said, I made temporarily marriage, or I said that temporarily marriage was allowed before, now it's haram till the day of judgment. 
very clear statement from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our uh, uh, our brothers and may Allah guide them and everybody, inshallah, um, from other sects like the Shia and others, they still use some hadith that temporary marriage is allowed. I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm responsible for my word. Temporary marriage is equal to adultery. It's zina. Is no longer halal. Okay. Anyone who says otherwise, may Allah subhanahu wa taala guide them to the truth. That's the least I could say. But because the Prophet said, I forbid it till the day of judgment. It's over. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu has a narration that it was allowed. Yes, we said it was allowed. We we we. This part we don't disagree. But then it's, it's like, for example, somebody at the beginning, like wudu, when the Sahaba lost water in the middle of the desert and they were traveling, okay, because of a reason, Aisha, she lost her necklace, she was looking for it. When, she, when, when they found it, they couldn't find water. They spent a few days without water. So what verse came down? The verse of? Tayammum. Huh? Correct? So now Tayammum was made or is still made as escape out of a problem what's the problem no water. if there's no water so same thing temporary marriage was escape at a certain point of time because of the number of people who lived and the generation wanted to grow and the number wanted to like adam alayhi salam when adam came down him and his wife were only two people on earth okay adam and eve okay and when they came down where, where did they come down to anybody know what city Okay, at least where they met. Anybody know? Where they met together? African. This, is, this guy's racist. Because <laughs> you're African? You want to be part of the... No, unfortunately not. Uh, Jeddah. Or Judah. Which is in Saudi Arabia now. Jeddah, that's where they met by the river. By the sea. Allah alam, I don't know. I, we were not there, so we're not sure. We just say maybe, inshallah. There's a lot of things that you have to say... Okay, accept it, but not, not like 100% uh, believe. One of our scholars, uh, just to make this talk easy today, because it's all fiqh. One of our scholars was asked, and uh, you know those questions that you get from some people, mashallah. Some questions are very, very good, very beneficial. Some questions, there is really no point of them. But people just say them, huh? So somebody came to our, one of our funny scholars, and he was always the one responding with weird answers. He told him, he said, well, what, Iblis was married? And the sheikh said, yeah. He said, what's his wife's name? He's like, he said, this wedding, I was not invited to. <laughs> uh, they, gave him, they didn't give me a card that had her name. How would I know something like that? These questions, we, questions, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left a lot of things in the Quran out. Not just because he didn't feel like putting it there or adding it. A lot of people now, they're still debating. And I saw two Muslims, mashallah. They are debating over for two hours, which tree did Adam eat from? And I'm like, okay, okay, then what? Really, after two hours, then what? Consider he ate apple, which everybody says, this is why we have the Adam apple. That's not true, by the way. I don't know where they got that. It got stuck in here, so it created, oh yeah, come on. Man. Adam was created before he ate the apple. Well, why would the apple make, okay? And he was created already, he was formed already, so his creation was done. So now if you eat, uh, uh, I don't know, if you eat watermelon, you turn green. <laughs> Nobody does that. It's just a matter of, so there is no point of these uh, questions. Anyway, so nikah al-mut'a, temporarily marriage, is haram. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, um, the, um, the hadith that we could respond to the Shia in saying that, anybody here Shia? Don't raise your hand. I don't want, I'm just saying. So I'm, I'm giving you the response. The hadith that forbids the temporary marriage, which they use now, who narrated that hadith? I just said his name two minutes. Huh? Ali ibn Abi Talib. So if you really take Ali, they take Ali as the Imam. We say, okay, he's our Imam too. Take this hadith. No, they won't take that hadith. This is the desire that leads people to. We, we can't pick and choose from the deen. What we like, okay, this imam is the best imam on earth. If he says something that we don't like, uh, he has a problem. And we already talked about this many, many times uh, before. So three types of marriage that are forbidden mainly, okay? There is one more marriage that is called al-zawaj al-urfi, the hidden 
or they call it the custom zawaj or the hidden marriage. What is the hidden marriage? So, so far, anybody remember what's the first marriage we said? Shigar, which is? Exchange marriage, okay? Number two? But remember, if somebody is really interested in your sister, and you're really interested in his sister, okay? That's, uh, that's okay. <laughs> I know that's okay. But then everybody pays, like the dowry, does the contract. But the way that we're talking about is saying what? No dowry, no nothing. You just give me your, okay? It's, it's like exchange marriage. And instead of me giving her 10,000, I'm just going to give you my sister to marry. That's the haram part. But if they both are going to do contracts, maybe they could do their wedding together. So save more money, inshallah. Huh? Way to escape uh, overspending. Third is a zawaj al urfi. What is a zawaj al urfi? Anybody? What is it? Anybody know what is that? When you get married in secret. Get married in secret. How? Like you just do the contract, but nobody knows. Okay, good. This is the marriage that fulfills all the condition except two. No wali, no guardian, and no wit or uh, no guardian, and it's not public. It's not done in public. No, there is witnesses. They bring two two friends. They're like, hey, you want to come with me? I want to get married to a sister. And the sister comes to the masjid. She's like, I have this guy that I saw in school. I want to get married. Okay, where is your guardian? And I don't have a guardian. Where is your anybody? No. Can we do it in the masjid? No, no, no. Just us. Write us a contract. Where's your witness? Oh, yeah, go ahead and bring anybody. So I go and pull two people from the masjid, grab them to the room and say, do you witness? And they're like, oh, they look nice. Yes, we witness. What is that? This is playing with the... And I, I told you before, most of the things that we're going to be talking about in marriage, which is to, only today and next time, inshallah, it's protecting the women's right more. So this is called Az-Zawaj Al-Urfi. Al-Urfi means, the word Urfi, it's a custom, but it's called Hidim. Al-Urfi. I know you guys like my writing, which is very bad in Arabic and English. Al-Urfi. I have one of the worst handwriting ever. That's what my sheikh used to say. He said, you changed the deen by writing. <laughs> if you were to write books, Alhamdulillah, gave us the computers. And they could correct us. Okay. Um, so these are the four, uh, the four marriage that is uh, haram, haram to do. Now, we talk about the pillars of marriage, which is called aqdu and nikah. When can a marriage contract be valid? Okay? Or when can a marriage in general be valid and active? What do we mean by valid and active? We mean that the blame is removed from both sides for doing something and the outcome of it happens. Meaning that now when we talk about this condition and these pillars, now the man and the woman could sit together by themselves. Now the man, the woman could sit in front of him without hijab. Now they could go out together. Okay? And then later when they do the announcement, now they could move on to one house together. And then the relations start becoming halal. Before that, it becomes haram. So what are the first two? We have two things. We have pillars and conditions. Always in any, any of our ibadat, we have two kinds. We always say pillars and conditions. Anybody know the difference? You always hear this, Arkanu Salah, the pillars of Salah. And then you always hear Shurutu Salah or Shurut Sahat Salah, the conditions of Salah. Are, are they different or same? Except you. Yes. Good way to look at it. Okay. Mention pillars doesn't change conditions according to the situation it could change and pillars are the, uh, the foundations okay huh yes is the condition when if it's not there okay it becomes invalid okay the action becomes invalid now um shalt is a condition it has to take place before the action but pillars are inside the action okay so conditions have to take place before the action and continues with the action like what are the condition of salah? Huh? Wudu, right? Wudu is a condition of salah. So if there is no wudu, no salah. So and that wudu and that condition has to do what? 
continue doing. You can just start the salah, okay, and you become impure and you say, I already started the khalas, finish. Count it as a salah. No, you don't count it as a salah. It's invalid. So condition starts before the action continues. A pillar is the foundation of the action. Meaning that without the pillars, the actions are invalid. Okay? But with the conditions, the action could be invalid. Like if somebody prayed with wudu, his salah is accepted or not? Or forgive me, astaghfirullah. His salah is correct or not? If somebody, listen to a question. If somebody prayed with wudu, his salah is accepted. Correct? Or uh, his salah is correct? True or false? Depends. Huh? Depends. Not necessarily, because there might be other, other factors, other conditions that are not there. So a condition doesn't guarantee that. But a pillar, if you don't have it, what would be the first pillar of salah? Anybody? First pillar, huh? Yeah. Allahu Akbar. The, the beginning. If somebody doesn't do that, everything else doesn't count. Fatiha is a condition of salah or a pillar of salah? Huh? Reading al Fatiha is what? A pillar of salah. Huh? Uh, Ruku' is? A pillar of salah. Facing the qibla. Condition, because it comes, you have to do, you can't. You can't start turning your back and then turn around while salah. You can't do that. Like you're traveling, you're traveling on a plane. But you're traveling, you try to face the qibla as much. Well, we're going to say facing the qibla is a condition as much as possible. We, the, the fuqaha put this condition, like put this statement after it, as much as possible. Okay? Even tahara, make an wudu as much as possible. What if I can't find water? Huh? Dry, dry ablution, correct? What if I can't find dust? which is a lot of people, maybe some of you guys when you travel, you do that. Okay, I see that in the airplane. I be next to people and they go like this. I'm like, what are you doing? They say, tayammum. Why are you making tayammum? Where's the dust? Tayammum, if there's dust, there's no dust in the airplane. And you can't make dust. Okay, your wall, you could destroy your wall at the house and make dust, go ahead. But in the airplane, you can't bring dust. He says, well, Allah said no water, do tayammum. Yes, do they have tayammum if there is dust. If the, like this wall, is there dust? Yes. No, it's not dust. It's what is this? It's literally called chalk dust. There you go. But it's not dust. <laughs> okay. Can you make wudu? I know we're off the marriage, but can you make wudu? You put your hand in this wall, or here. Like some people, I see that. I see that a lot. When we are like in gatherings, and like, where is the water? Oh, no water, man. Bismillah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? It's like I'm making tayammum. No, 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 no. You make tayammum from, with dust. The dust has to be on your hand. You have to see it. So if there is no water, no dust, what do we do? Pray. pray without wudu. Salah is correct, 100%. As long as you don't find water and you don't have, you don't have dust. But you don't hit the table and say, I'm going to make tayammum from that. You pray without facing the Qibla, if you can't face the Qibla. In the airplane, it's almost impossible to face the Qibla. Even if you face the Qibla, the airplane doesn't, mashallah, the, the, the pilot keeps going the direction of the Qibla. Or your camel. You're on a camel, maybe, I don't know, and you want to do one, I don't know, but you know, nobody would do that nowadays. You, you go to, like in Egypt, at the pyramids, you ride a camel, and you're like, mashallah, the ibadah increase in your heart that you're going to do salah. Okay, go ahead. You're going to face the Qibla at the beginning, and then the camel is going to, walk, it's not going to face the Qibla. That's fine. If it's a Sunnah Salah, that's fine. If it's obligatory, you face the Qibla first and so on. Let's go back to the marriage, okay? Maybe we could do Salah later, inshallah. Uh, so the pillars of marriage are two, okay? Al-Ijab, acceptance, or uh, Al-Ijab, obligations, and Al-Qabul, acceptance. What do you mean conditions or pillars? Huh? Pillars, arkan, arkan, pillars. Two things, okay? First one is what? Ijab. Ijab. Ijab is obligation, making something obligatory upon you by saying to the women that you're gonna marry her, okay? You can't just go to somebody's house and you look at the father and you're like, you know what I mean, huh? What do you want? Oh, you know, you know what I came for, okay? And then he says, oh, I know you came for, no problem, thank you. You go home and you're like, I got married. That's not marriage. That's not marriage. It has to be an actual statement that shows your intention, okay? That shows what you want. And the fuqaha, they even, like, big discussion in the books, do you have to say it in Arabic? <laughs> what if I don't speak Arabic? 
Okay? Say it in any language. Go ahead. But don't go and say, because I don't speak Arabic, I, I wish I could learn the wording, but I wanted to say it to you. But you know what I mean. Okay, what do you mean? Oh, when I called you, you, you knew, huh? You figured it out. Is this marriage? They said it, it has to be what? Obligation that you stated upon yourself. You have to say, or they say to you, the father says what? I give my daughter to you. And then you do the second part, which is the acceptance. Acceptance from both sides. You can't love somebody and get married without her accepting you. Okay, you can say, I decided I'm going to get married to you. That's it. Okay, her family says no. She says no. So first is the obligation. That's the first pillar, ijab. And it has to be in a form of what? What if somebody is mute? Sign language. Huh? Sign. He has to do it in a sign language. In a way that the person understands. That's why some of the fuqa even said something. They said if you go to somebody and they don't speak English. And you only speak English. And you tell him, you know what? I wish I could marry your daughter. And he's like, you understand me? Will that work as a marriage? They say you have to bring somebody to translate. The guy has to know what you're saying. Okay? So this is the obligation part. And then the second part is what? The acceptance. Either you accept when he says it, or they accept. When is it done? At the same time? Or could it be the obligation in one day, meaning the wording in one day, and maybe the acceptance in 10 months? It has to be right at the same moment, which we call the aql. So when you go to the masjid, and the sheikh says, say it, I prayed istikhara to marry your daughter. And then the guy said, but I didn't, man. Give me a few months. Okay. Give you a few months to think. Now he goes home, you go home. Is this marriage? Is this contract? No. It has to be done what? At the same what? No, 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 not same time. Be very specific. At the same gathering. Not same moment, same gathering. Meaning before you leave. Like if you tell him, I, I want to marry your daughter. And he has a phone call. And he's like, Assalamu alaikum. Sorry man, somebody's coming for my daughter. Please call me later and so on. Here you go. There's this connection between the... So we say at the same gathering. As long as you're both sitting together in the same house, same time. So it shouldn't be a delay between the wording and the acceptance. That's why in the imam, the imam will tell you right away. Say it after me. And then you say the, the after. No. Yeah, but I don't understand. Let's say um, I come, a person comes to ask... Um, for a sister um, and then the father will say okay uh, let me think about it I'll get back to you next week that's not a contract no I'm not saying it's a contract but can he do that can he have time yeah, to think yeah. then but we're talking about now when can a contract become valid mm. okay when can you say she is my wife the first one that you said she is your fiance you call her uh, your promised wife you call her your whatever name you want to call her okay but I'm saying when can a contract when can you say this contract that I have or this contract that we make. Contract doesn't mean an actual written thing, okay? This is more protection. But we're saying contract is a deal between two people, okay, two adults that they understand what they're saying. So these are the two pillars. Now, the conditions for a contract to be valid. The first condition, إِذْنُ wali, The permission of the guardian, okay? And we, we're going to stop with this one for a little bit, okay? Let's, let's mention all the four and then go on. Second condition. Second condition is the dory, the money that you give, the dory, D-O-W, I don't know, R-Y, okay. Third condition is the acceptance of the women to the marriage, okay. This is the condition, this is not a pillar right now. Fourth is the witness to the contract or the making the contract public. And we'll talk about each individual, inshallah. So what is the first condition again? Huh? Wali. The three madhahib, Malik, Ahmad, and Shafi, rahmanullah, says a wali, a guardian, is a must. And I'm going to conclude for you so it becomes easy. Who is a women's guardian? They, are, they go in order. Father, brother from the same... Father and mother, okay, and then brother that is no before brother that, that sorry sir grandfather, okay, and then a brother from 
the mother or the father, one-sided, and then uncle, and then cousin, okay? So this is the order. That's the wali, the guardian. They go this order. So if you have your brother and you have your father, they both are alive. They both are with you in the same house. You can go and say to your brother, hey man, I like this guy. Help me out. I know your father is going to say no. And you take your brother with you and you say, here is my guardian. The question should be, do you have a father? Yes, he's first. So the guardian of the woman is who? Huh? The father. A wali is a condition in the marriage contract, is a must. You have to have a guardian. Except to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatan wasi'a. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, said that a woman does not need a guardian. <laughs> Everybody's happy about this now. They, they're all going to turn Hanafis now. But, 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 he said, but, and Abu Hanifa made it very strict, by the way. He, he just didn't say, because a lot of people nowadays, they tell you, you know what? Uh, Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, said that it's okay to not have a guardian. So why are you being strict? He said, if a woman would to marry without a guardian, it's fine if the guardian approves it. Okay. He didn't say get married without a guardian. He said if your father is okay with it, you don't have to take him with you and, and present him and be your guardian at the marriage or write him as your guardian and sign the papers and so on. But he has to know about it, not behind his back. He, Abu Hanifa didn't say that. This is what most people didn't understand about the statement of Imam Abu Hanifa. And some of the Ahnaf, by the way, they disagreed with that. They said, no, the woman should not marry herself. The woman needs a guardian for her. Why is that? First, for her protection. Subhanallah, when a woman gets married by herself, two things happen. She, be, she become less in the eyes of her husband in a way that when he says, the husband always says this, if she didn't obey her father and she married behind his back and she, he raised her in his own house, took care of her 20 years, she could do the same thing with me. Even though he likes her, but he's, he's still that part is in him. Okay? Second, her rights are lost. Why? Because if he divorces her, who's going to take her rights? The father is not there. Okay? The father said, I, I, you got married without me now? Go ahead. Live your life. This guy, when he knows that this woman has nobody behind her, nobody that supports her, nobody cares about her, do you think he's going to treat her right? He might, first month. What if divorce happened? Easily, he could say, bye-bye, open the door, get her out. Why? Because nobody's with her. That's why they, they said the condition. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, لا نكاح إلا بولي. You cannot marry, or marriage is invalid, without or incorrect without a guardian marriage is what incorrect without without a guardian you have to have somebody with you this is the first thing and uh, um, something here with with that that we have to mention that we, we have to differentiate between two a virgin woman who's getting married for the first time and a woman who was married before and her husband either divorced her or, or, or died or something happened Okay. The first woman, which is most of the women who married for the first time, meaning, okay, or if she's virgin, for a question to be precise, he should ask her, and it's okay if she does not respond, but he should ask her for her, uh, not for her permission, but he should let her know that she's getting married to this man. He says, for example, so and so is coming to ask for your hand, okay? And we're going to talk about the part that can a guardian force his daughter to get married or not and so on. But he asks her and she doesn't say, she doesn't respond. If she doesn't respond, that means she, huh? She agrees, she accepts. But for a woman who's been married before, who's not a virgin, who's been married before, she must speak her response. She must say, yes, I accept or no, I don't accept. 
and the woman who's pre-married or who's not virgin, she has the right to accept or not. It's her choice. She could say yes, she could say no. But a woman who's married for the first time, the guardian could accept for her with letting her know, not behind her back, not to come home and say, hey, I got your husband. You ready to go with him? No, not like that. If he goes home, he says, so-and-so is asking for your hand. He's a, as long as his choice is according to the religion and he's a good guy and he's trusted, again. But if, if the father, may Allah forbid, he doesn't pray, okay? He comes from nightclubs at 2 a.m. in every night and he brings somebody with him and he says, hey, this guy is very cool. He bought me some drink. You want to marry him? And I already, that's it, it's a deal. She could say, you and him go to hell, hellfire, inshallah. If you don't repent, no, she shouldn't say that. But I'm saying, so she has that choice, okay? That, I, I mean the woman who's pre-married. The woman who's for the first time, he asked her, and she must have a, a guardian to have her witness or share. So according to Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, as we said, he said that, um, and he, he also put another condition just to be very precise. I know today's old fiqh is very tough, very heavy, but bear with me, inshallah. He said, what if his daughter gets married to somebody who is not on her level, either in religion, he's, he's not equal to her, he's not good for her. And the father knows that. Can he separate between them? Can he break that contract? He said, yes. So even though Abu Hanifa didn't give him what? He didn't put him as a condition for it marriage but he also said he could do what break. break the contract make it invalid so abu hanifa they said not only that he says no guardian for a woman needed but he made other conditions that are very tough to limit the first condition majority of the scholar says a woman must have a guardian for the sisters please okay if you're married alhamdulillah you're done if you're getting married don't just say i am old enough I do my own decisions. I have my life. I don't care. And then go and say, you want to marry me? Which is okay for women to ask men to marry. That's fine. But I, I don't recommend it. Again. Because he's going to always tell you later, remember you're the one who asked for my hand. I didn't ask for yours. Okay? As you say, you're going to be worth nothing. The man, again, do not lose anything in marriage. Except that they spend, mashallah. But really, in reality, they don't lose anything. If they like the women, mashallah, they enjoy their life. If they don't, they'll just leave them. Which again, this is, I'm not talking about Islamic. I'm talking about the experience and the real life right now. So for a woman to protect herself right, do everything that you can to have your rights before your marriage. Before, because if you say, no, he's a good guy, and then you get married, you never know what happens. People change. And if you don't believe it, ask around. Ask people who got married. People change. People change to good and people change to evil. You can marry somebody that you love so, 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 so much. And after one year, you don't even want to remember him or her. Happens. Some other people, they get married and kind of arrange married. Like we don't like that, but it happens and it's okay to, to do that. And after marriage, subhanAllah, they have 10 kids, 12 kids. They're living very happily life and... They enjoy it more than the people who used to hold hands and buy flowers before marriage. Okay, now they're hitting them, each other with the, I don't know, with the chairs and rustling at the house. While the others, they're enjoying their time because their life is built on the Islam and the Iman. They have more kids now to take care of and, and life to build. Okay, so balance between both. So this is the first condition anyway for, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details on what can we do. Second condition is the rida al mar'a qabla al zawaj the acceptance of a woman before her marriage she has to accept second one is, uh, huh? yeah second one is the mahr we could switch around okay right al mahr third which you guys okay you want that no problem you're paying not me okay they're not paying either women don't pay mahr you don't owe him anything okay you guys pay everything this is the Huh? No exchange, man. Whatever she gives you, it's a, it's a gift. You could get it. She, she, could, she should take it back. That's why a lot of time... Okay. We're going to talk... Maybe some responsibility. I don't know if we have time for that. But 
from the obligation of a man is to spend on his wife. This is obligatory. To spend what is enough for her to live. But the extra is a, as a gift or, or, or good manners. Like she says, my friends, they go to uh, where? Ohio. Huh? Ohio? Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. Oh, well, I thought, what are you going to do in Ohio? <laughs> You're very weird. <laughs> okay. Hawaii, I heard you. Know. Okay, they go to Hawaii. He says, okay, you know, he, he's actually doing you a favor by taking you to Hawaii. It's not obligatory for him to do that. Which I tell you, go ahead and take her because her friends are going. So be equal. But they don't have to do it. I'm saying, religious wise, what the man has to do, he has to deal with good manners, obligatory, and he has to spend on you, which is enough for living. He cannot eat outside in, in uh, a fancy restaurant and then take you to uh, in and out if you like in and out it looks better than other restaurants no but I'm talking about like every night he goes out and he spends like a hundred dollars on his food and then he comes home and says okay what do you want double double six dollars no problem <laughs> he can't do that this is haram he can't do that okay but this this is obligatory to spend how much should he spend on you what he can afford okay if you have your friend and her husband is a millionaire and he buys her dress every day. Each dress is $10,000 made in Paris. Don't come home and say, hey, I need a dress made. He doesn't have to bring you a dress made in Paris. Okay? Again, and she doesn't have to cook for you and, and clean your dishes and clean. It's a fadl. It's a virtue. It's something good that she does for you. She doesn't have to do it. It's not obligatory. Okay? It's not obligatory for her to cook, to clean the house, to wash the clothes. It's not. No, no, it's not. <laughs> right? That's, you're very weird. You're, you divide. But we're saying, again, we're saying life is sharing. Okay? This is very important. Wallah, very important. In marriage, you have to understand this. You're not taking a slave into your house, and you're not taking a, a working handyman 24-7 that he brings you money. No, life is not like that. Life is sharing. That's why, for the women, by the way, for the sisters, if you're working, your money is your money. If you're working, your money is her money. See, religious gives, Wallahi, religion of Islam gives more rights to women, but our women needs to study that. But then he gives them obligations. Okay, don't skip with that. Don't say, my money. Yes, you have 10,000. If he says, I need $1,000, you could say, no, you borrow $1,000. <laughs> he says, okay, he, it's serious. Fiqh. He takes the $1,000. You could tell him every day, where's my $1,000? But if he gives you a thousand dollar, then forget it. <laughs> Spend it however you want. This is, but now you have obligations toward him. Okay? One of the obligations, again, one of the obligations that if a man gets married, and this is part of the marriage that you have to know, that if he calls his women to, uh, uh, at night time, I know I'm gonna use general wording, okay, for you to understand, then she has to obey, as long as there is nothing preventing her from doing that. Okay, and it becomes haram upon her to disobey him in such a matter. This is one of his obligation upon her. So he spent, and it's it's like a life, an exchange life. Okay, not oh you're doing everything and I'm doing nothing, or you're doing nothing and you're, no, it's not like that. Okay, Taib. So mahr, he pays dury at the beginning of the contract and he writes something down. How much should be your dury? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Who said nothing crazy? MashaAllah. <laughs> Rasulullah said, which meaning of what you said, but in a nice hadith, he said nothing crazy. He said, Qala, the best women, the best of women who has less of their dowry. Why is that? Because when she chooses a man because of religion and he's religious, money to her really doesn't really matter as much. It's just something to show his appreciation. This is what mahr is for, okay? So how much did you give her? In reality, Rasulullah gave Aisha 500 uh, dirham. 500 dirham now is... One dirham is how much? 17 cent, correct? So 500 is how much? Like 40, uh, 70. Huh? How much? 500? Go ahead, 500 times 0.17, see how much is that? Type. Ali radiallahu anhu gave, gave Fatima radiallahu anhu his dirah, his weapon, because he didn't find anything else. 
Another man came to Rasulullah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, he says, give her uh, money. He said, I don't have money. He says, give her gold. He said, I don't have gold. He says, give her uh, $85. MashaAllah, $85. We say the best opinion about Duri depends on two things. Anybody? Two things that you consider. If you want to calculate your Duri today, don't say, I'm going to be like Aisha, $80. I am telling you, ask for a lot. Why? Because not a lot that <laughs> you tell him $100,000. I went to one of the weddings. I went to one of the weddings and the guy said, we, we asked for somebody's hand. Her father said, uh, I have two daughters. Allah, this is you. He said, I have two daughters. One, she's a US citizen and one, she has a green card. The US citizen is 100,000. The green card is 50,000. <laughs> okay, because the guy don't have, the guy has a visa and you know the, the, the way here to live, you have to have, she's going to give him one of both, right? So he said, citizenship is 100,000. And I said, you know what? Keep your hundred. I said, well, if this guy has a hundred thousand, he wouldn't get married. He would go back and visit his family. He left his family for 10 years. He couldn't go back to them. Even 50,000, where is he going to come up with $50,000? So I said, keep, you know what? Keep your daughters. And the guy was like, come on, man, let's try to negotiate a little bit. I said, what negotiate? The guy's selling his daughters. Three months later, I was going out of one of the masajid. I found his daughter walking with somebody else. She took her hijab off. She left the house and she's living with a roommate. I don't say she's bad because she took her hijab off. No, no, I'm not saying that. Maybe she has a reason. But I'm saying if she got married, wouldn't it be better for her to live with somebody in the same house with a husband that respects and take care of her? And this guy is very good by the way, he's very religious. Or now she's in the streets away from her fa father and her family, she doesn't want to return to them. She lived her life now in her own style. Which one was better? So Rasulullah says the best of women is the one who has what? That's the now how much, Mahmoud? How much you want to give? My question to you is... Huh? Oh, you have a question. Okay, I thought you want to give... Regarding the dowry, uh -huh. if you said it's something, you know, we don't have much to give. Yes. This is hypothetical people. Could you give like, you know, box of chocolate? <laughs> no. No, it has, okay. Box of chocolate, any, <laughs> anything that is, okay, if any, okay, you're dangerous, man. This needs to be a post on Facebook. Mahmoud is gonna give, right? Clear, so if anybody already is. <laughs> anything that is usable, that she eats or drinks or use or clothes like that, that cannot be considered mahr. Something that she benefit from for a period of time. So uh, she's gonna keep the chocolate in the refrigerator ten months. No, no, no. I'm saying like gold. Okay, gold is, could be a dowry. Ten thousand dollar, even if she spend it, but at least she benefit a lot from it. Okay. If not, Rasulullah told him, give him get, well, how much you know from Quran. He said Surah Al-Fatiha or some other Surah, twenty verses. He said, give it to her, meaning teach her. Nowadays, a lot of people, they actually like this hadith and they go, especially the brothers, okay? they like, sister, please, Allah, Rasulullah said, some Quran, I have a Fatiha, alhamdulillah. No! Okay, we're in 2016. Anybody who comes like that, believe it or not, later on, it creates a problem. Give something that she wouldn't later tell you, hey, remember, you didn't give me anything. But also, make yourself worth something to her. Say, you know, alhamdulillah. Umrah could be a dowry. Uh, money. So again, how much? The calculation is dependent on two ways. The status or the social life of both and the recent marriage from her family. So two things. Social life, meaning, or the, the status in life. Like, for example, mashallah, you're a millionaire or she's a millionaire. Don't go to somebody who's a millionaire and ask and tell her father, I'm going to get you chocolate. He's going to kick you out not only of the house, out of Davis. Okay? Correct? So if you know you're going to be asking for somebody who lived like a certain life and high state, you have to be expecting a car or something, I don't know, something that is worth something to them. So it depends on that. And the ulama consider that. What if that's not there? They consider to her, the sister is married with a dowry of the last relative that got married from her family. Family could be like... If their family is like that, alhamdulillah, that's easy for you. For example, you have a cousin, okay? She got married one month ago. Her husband, her husband, wrote her a dowry, 
okay? And you don't know how much to ask for. It's not a tradition to ask for anything. You don't know. Your family don't know how much to ask for. So how much should they ask for? What your cousin asked for. And this becomes your obliga obligatory. It's your right. You have the right to ask for that, okay? She has the right. But then, if they both agree and he says, okay, lady, if I have a $10,000, I won't be living in Davis. I only have five. She's like, five, Dory is fine. Okay, if they agree on something, that's something else. But then, her right, don't say, Attaqillah, Billah, you're a shaitan, you're going against the sunnah, you're a soul, and all of this, uh, no, no, keep it yourself. She has the right to ask for that, and it's her right. But if they both agree, like he says, Wallahi, I am, okay, I'm going to write a Dory, $2,000, okay? Is that fine? And the father is like, Wallahi, we like you, you're very religious, we want you for our daughter, she loves you, she wants you, no problem. You can, she can't say, no, I need 10 now after you get married. She's like, yeah, I told you too, but you actually owe, owe me 10. No, she can't say that, no. Um, for the dowry, suppose it's money, does it have to be something that he's able to present right then and there? So he can That's, say 20,000 and he doesn't have the 20,000. That's what we're gonna talk about. The dowry is a promise loan that either would be given at the beginning of marriage or throughout marriage. So it's a loan that he owes you. Like, but he has to give something up front. He, he must give something, even a dollar. Okay? Maybe my wife will hear that, I know. When we got married, she, okay, they asked for, we, we looked into her uh, sister and we did the same dirt. So she asked for five hour money, which is one dollar our time. Is Allah khairan? A lot except from her. I still owe her the five thousand. I still owe her a lot, but I even owe her her gold, okay? The gold is considered dowry or not? Well, depends. No, 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 no. Not yes or no. It depends on the tradition. If in your custom and your family, when you give gold, you consider it part of the dowry. So you say, I'm, I'm writing you $20,000, okay? But I bought you gold for 10000 so I only owe you 10000 now. If you consider that within tra the tradition and you agree upon, that's fine. Most people, they consider gold as a gift. They don't consider it as a mahr, as a dowry. They do that. We, we did that. I, I gave her gold that is worth maybe 30000 40000 whatever was it at that time. That's for her, gift. And I actually took it back again later. <laughs> but subhanAllah, this is how life goes. <laughs> but you owe that till you die. So that dowry, she says, give me five our money. But it has to be new from the bank. So I went to the bank and I got a... Five dollar new, wrote her name on it, give it to her. She wanted that up front. Now what about the 10,000 that I owe or the 20,000? This is a loan that you owe her till the rest of your life. She could forgive you later. And subhanAllah, you know, most of the marriage that we have seen that continues for 20, 30 years, they never, subhanAllah, our sisters, Gazaullah khairan, they never ask for that money. Because life continues and subhanAllah, they... Just when something happened, a problem happened, they start remembering the, the mahr. Or maybe when, when she want to buy something and he gives her so on and so on, okay? That's, that's something else that you could... Yes? Um, for the husband, let's say the husband dies before he gives her all the money, is it forgiven additional gold? Well, he's still... It's a loan that she takes it from his inheritance first, and then she inherits. Like if he left money, she takes her money first, the loan, and then she inherits the rest. Okay, so she has two money now. Money that he owe her after his death and then money that comes out of inheritance. And that money should not be considered with inheritance. They don't calculate it. It's, it's, it's something totally different. So that dowry you could give at, say, at the beginning or at the, at the end or during the marriage or whenever you, you can. Last condition. Um, again, we said um, uh, something about the, the mahr, about the contract. We, remember last time when I told you, when you write a contract, you two are married, but not officially. Meaning that everything between both men and women are halal except the actual marriage, except getting together. Even though that, that has rules that if it happens, it's not considered zina or adultery. Okay. But meaning that she stays at her house, you see her, she sees you, you go out together, uh, you see her hair, you, she dresses for you a certain way, everything becomes halal, like she's your wife. The only thing is, you, at, at the end, you, meaning that they don't sleep together. This is the rule. But the ulama says, what if we write the contract? She becomes my wife. I go to her house and she comes, oh, uh, all of this. But then we don't continue the marriage. 
something happened between families and they decide to get divorce. And it's called divorce because the contract is written. How much from the dorish does she get now? Now you wrote her something, but you didn't actually get married. So would you give or not? The ulama says she gets half. Half of her dorish she, you owe her. Except if you two were in one place privately with nobody with you, even if nothing happened, you owe her all her mahr. That you have to give it to her. For example, you went to her house to visit her. Okay, you and her went to a room and you closed the door and you kept talking about something and you left. Is that considered private? Yes, but nothing happened between you and you decided to divorce. Now you're not gonna continue the marriage, meaning you're not gonna do the actual nikah, the actual marriage, okay? The, the, the intercourse of it, the actual relation between the man and the woman. You're not gonna do it, the house is stopped. You say, we can continue together. You give her everything that you are. But I didn't even touch her, well I finish. But if divorce happened during the time of contract, and don't be surprised. Subhanallah, I, I told you when, when, when money gets involved, you know, it creates a lot of problems. We had two, uh, a woman and her daughter, she got married, my father wrote their contract to her uh, cousin. So her, her, her mother and her, his mother are sisters, okay? So something happened between them they didn't, they didn't get, actually get married, so they decided to separate. They came to my father. They said, we get half of the money. My father said, okay, no problem. How much we wrote? My father wrote $10,000, US dollars. Her mother said, no, we didn't write US dollars. We wrote a, a Kuwait, Kuwaiti dinar. And you know, Kuwaiti dinar is double the, the US dollar. So 10,000 is about 20,000. My father said, no, Wallah, he wrote. And the problem started that they went to court and it was a big, this is family, sisters, okay? When money gets involved, expect anything. That's why I said to the sisters, take your rights and protect yourself because you never know what happens. You never know what happens. Somebody, I'll, next time, inshallah, I'll give you a very beautiful story. Somebody who got married and he loved his wife so, 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 so much that he divorced her and got married to somebody else because he loved her so much, okay? And this is Sunnah, Rasulullah mentioned that hadith. So the last of the conditions, very quickly, so we could let, let you go, inshallah. Last of the condition is what? Huh? So we have what now? Huh? Wali. Huh? Acceptance, and then? Witness. Ah, no, the third is witness, okay? According to Imam Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa, Ahmad, witness are must wajib. According to Imam Malik, witness are not wajib, but making it public is wajib. You could say, what, what do you mean? He means that you don't have to bring like two people. You have minimum two. You have to have minimum two witnesses, okay? He says, just by announcing to everybody, saying that everybody know that so-and-so is married to so-and-so, okay? Everybody know that so-and-so lives with so-and-so in their house right now. Everybody around them and people, like you put it on Facebook. Do you need witness to witness your contract? Imam Malik says no, because it's, it's what? It's public. So he considered public as a form of witness. This is the point of Imam Malik. So in a sense, it's a witness. That's why we, uh, we said minimum, you need two witness for your contract. Minimum, two witness. Two men, okay? Two men witnessing. <coughs> Two men, it has to be two men. It's different from loan. Loan, you could have a man and two women, or uh, four women, that's something, or, or uh, one man and two women, sorry. Two men witness, or as according to Imam Malik, you need to what? Make it public, publicize it, and say that is okay, and it's, it's me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for the, uh, you know, even the hadith is, is not very strong, but this is the opinion of majority of the ulama, or most of the ulama, as they say, it's a must and it's a condition that you have to have a witness and i'lan and you have to announce your, uh, your marriage. Imam Malik says announcing will consider to be a form of uh, witnessing wallah. This is enough inshallah. We'll be talking next week inshallah about the conditions that you could write in your contract and then um, will give the walima and what can you do during your day of marriage 
what is allowed, what is not allowed. And then inshallah, maybe next year we can talk about divorce. We don't want to combine. Let's get married first. And then after one year, I'll see you for divorce. No, 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 inshallah. You won't divorce, inshallah. Any question, inshallah? I am done. With uh, any questions so far? Yes. When, when you overspend on your wife, can you be, does, can that be like good deeds? Does yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said the best money to spend is the money that you spend on your family. The hadith says what? The best of money that you spend is the money that you spend on your family. And he says, the best among you is the best to his family. So subhanAllah, when you go and you get your, your wife, uh, 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 can you turn off the camera? Subhanakallah, <laughs> 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 